Oops, I've headed into the rough. Step one is to mark where the ball went in. Pick out which tree the ball's gone towards, work out how far in from the fairway it is, and you've got a much better chance of finding your golf ball. And part of step one is acceptance. I've hit it in there, and it's up to me to get it out again. Let's face it, golf is a challenge. So let's head down and see if I can find it. Well, I found it. Check out that lie. Sitting down. And that's step two, is to assess the lie and work out what club we can hit out of that grass. Now we have to be careful here, we've got to be realistic. If we try to hit out of there with a five iron or a six iron, then what's going to happen is we're going to hit quite a lot of grass before the ball. And the reason that that can't work is because that grass is going to get mashed between the club and ball and it's going to reduce friction and it's going to reduce your spin. And backspin is what keeps the ball up in the air. So off the fairway, fine, You've, you're generating plenty of backspin with an iron or a hybrid and it keeps the ball up in the air. This rough is going to reduce that amount of backspin greatly. So realistically, I can't get five iron out of that lie. I could hit the ball and it'll start up, but then it's just going to die and it's going to just stay in the rough. And obviously we're going to go through a lot more grass with a five iron than with a short iron. So we're going to be realistic. I'm going to have a go with a nine iron here. I'm going to have a couple of practice swings just to get an idea of, of how thick that grass is. And yes, we're going to lose some club head speed going through so much grass, but we can reduce the amount of grass that we trap between the club and the ball by changing the angle of approach. So what that means is I'm going to play the ball back in my stance so that I can hit down on the ball more. That way I'm only going to go through an inch of grass instead of four or five inches of grass like a lot of us try to do. So back in the stance and the other thing that can help us to, to get down to the bottom of the ball is just close the face a little bit. So we're just going to hood it in and same as hitting a, a plugged lie in a bunker, by hooding it in, we're going to reduce the amount of bounce on the club and the club can get lower into the grass more easily. I'm going to close that face, hinge the wrists a bit so that I can hit down and we could be able to attack that ball from quite a steep angle and get plenty of force going forwards. And I'm going to hit this quite hard. There we go. So even though I aimed off to the right, it definitely pulled to the left a little bit with that closed face and, and the grass trying to grab hold of that hosel. But it's got down on the fairway. It's run a good long way because there's not a lot of backspin on the shot. So at least I've got some distance that way. Yeah, it's not got all the way to the green, but I've got myself back in play there. Got about 40, 50 meters to go. Give myself a chance to get up and down for that par. And I see a lot of club golfers make the mistake of using something that doesn't have enough loft so you can't generate enough backspin and also trying to lift the ball up in the air. We've actually got to hit down on this shot and allow the loft of the club to do the work for us and it's going to run. We need to take our medicine, get the ball back in play and we can still save our par. Our next video on the trouble shot series is going to be pitching to an elevated green. Thanks to Gary, he's requested that one. It's going to be tricky, I'm looking forward to it. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and if you want to receive notifications, hit the little bell next to the subscribe button there. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get up and down. I think I could get that one. Are you the best golfer you can be?